Hey guys, uh, welcome to the first episode of the Rick and Remy Show. And, uh, this is Rick. This is Remy. And we're going to do it. We're going to give it a shot. Uh, and today we're going to uh, talk about our first subject. Uh, we're going to talk about this subject a lot. But Louisville history and the history of our area, because uh, like we said in the introduction video, we're from the city and uh, we both have a deep passion for the city. So uh, uh, the, the point I want to make today that we're trying to talk about is Corn Island. Uh, a lot of people don't really know about Corn Island. I didn't either until recently. It was the small limestone island that uh, George Rogers Clark and his party uh, had come here and they, uh, they, set up, they set up a fort, Fort Nelson, on the island and the island supposedly had sycamores, huge sycamores, cottonwoods and, uh, and giant cane trees on it and uh, for me to imagine a primitive, untouched, you know, really like nature-wise, the scene is, is a pretty cool thing to roll up on and then be stuck here at the falls and then pick that island and not even be on land, but just to choose that island is pretty unique. Yeah, and it's, uh, it was pretty big. It was 43 acres uh, at that time. I mean, that's when it was surveyed in the 1700s. Um, this is right at the head of the falls of the Ohio, and uh, 43 acres uh, has a lot of unique history behind the island. Uh, at first, you know, it was, like I said, like you just said, it was all nature. You know, and they slowly developed it. Uh, it was surveyed in. Uh, 1773, uh, Thomas Bullitt, Bullitt. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and at first it was named Dunmore's Island. It wasn't named Corn Island. Uh, that was after uh, the, go the Crown Governor at the time of Virginia, because this was before the Declaration of Independence, so this is when it was still British colonies. Uh, and the, the Crown Governor of Virginia, which is what Kentucky was a part of Virginia at the time, we didn't break off yet. Uh, that he, the governor was the Earl of Dunmore, and that's why we named Dunmore Island. Awesome. Uh, yeah, the, the, and then eventually, like he said, it led up to you know Order. Clark coming in and you know settling it that way. Uh, but. It, it was settled eventually, like you said, by Clark and his militia. Ten to twenty families. Yeah, it was sixty uh, civilians plus the militia. So that was a sizable force at the time. To house, feed, to you have to have a if, if you have a stopping point where you need to set up. I guess that would be an isolated place. The Indians couldn't like, you know, necessarily just swim over. Maybe they could. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Strategically speaking, why that spot? Because if you had to get off. Indiana or Kentucky side, I guess Corn Island would be a place you could see visually down the river. Right. Someone getting off the left or right. It, it was all strategy based. It really was. It was, you know. It, but to your point, I did read on uh, CornIslandArchaeologically.com. I mean, it, it's a great website. Um, they have a lot of the Corn Island's history. Uh, but I did read that they did face a lot of skirmishes with what they called savages, which is the natives. Um, and that was a major deal with the civilians that stayed because Clark's militia stayed there only a short period of time and then they left to fight the Revolutionary War. So you had these militiamen, you gotta think, women and children probably made most of them up. Yeah, they, they were easy targets for these savages, uh, quote unquote savages, to kidnap, to kidnap, to rape. rape whatever and they faced that 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 was a hardship for them uh, but in the end they came through and, and, and they worked it out they worked everything out and it, it was a good settlement um, you know and it, the, the civilians really did their part the, the 60 civilians that came with the militia turned that into really a farming a they, farming community a small Community. At the time, Dunmore Island is what it was called. At the time, Dunmore Island was nothing more than limestone, trees, and wilderness. That's all it was, 43 acres of that. And they, within year, within a few years, turned that into a successful farming colony, which is what the name Corn Island came from, because the, the, the fields of corn and the fields of, you know, all the different... The meso... Maize, yeah, corn, like, yeah. 
And all, all the different agriculture they had there. I mean, it was well known as an agricultural society, but it was also used uh, as communication posts for the militia of the Revolutionary War. Uh, and that's what it, what Clark envisioned it to be at first, but that's not what it, the main purpose was. It was as agriculture is what it turned into be. Serving that purpose. Right. And, you know, it, it served as a double, double purpose. You had your agriculture, you had a flourishing society, or it was not really necessarily a society. beginning, beginning flourishing society of a, a sixty people. You know, probably 10, 10 families or so. Uh, plus, you have the militiamen coming back home to Point Island, uh, their new found home. Um, and these people were really, really intelligent for their time to turn just bare wilderness. And a, a little, I mean, little based on the mainland, but 43 acre island. Well, when you decide to clear an area for a fort, that's a major decision on saying, uh, this is what we're going to do, and this is what everybody is going to have to just Expe back. Especially, I mean, even a day building a fort on an island would be challenging, but let alone without heavy machinery, without power tools. Yeah. With, without modern day equipment, you know, they were doing this shit by hand. And you're doing it in the ruse of, uh, at night when you're unprotected before the fort's up, what is your whole, that lifestyle before yeah. the fort's up is, is a, is a nerve-wracking... I mean, who, who knows what kind of wildlife was there? Plus you had uh, native Indians still staying on that island. Um, not a lot at all. But there was some that would... They were floating around. They, yeah. they were interested. When, when smoke bellows from somewhere that the Native Americans did not recognize an area for which they had stayed and camped out at, it was noticeable to them as an, an intruder. Uh, intruders are here and they're letting us know where they are by having smoke, you know, so... Yeah, and these people lived there and really made their, their life here. I mean, the first child was born on the island. Uh, his name was Isaac Kimbley. He, he was son to a militiaman uh, in Clark's militia, uh, Andrew and Sally Kimberly. Uh, that's the people that had the first kid on Point Island. And that really marked. Uh, that really marked. This is a worst settling this permanently. Having the worst kid to stay. A baby know? coming out crying is a, is a good sign. That that's the first marking point that this is going to be something special. Somebody wanted to do. With the, with the area, and when they decided to come over onto the Kentucky side uh, and to start choosing and tracking out lots or how to go about that, I'm sure uh, was confusing. But you, you know, you don't want to live too far away. So downtown Louisville, uh, where the war, and uh, you know, it, it being the Corn Island, Corn Island was like right in front of the KI, north of the KI Bridge. And there's pictures online that you can see uh, what has been left of the island in like 1914. And you could see, and it's pretty interesting because when you're on the waters and going uh, west around the city of Louisville, you can look over and see the canal, and the K&I, and you can imagine after seeing the pictures online what the island, where you can see it yeah. in your head if you try. Yeah, and uh, eventually, I mean, it was it was a successful colony, and you know they were here to stay. They were having children there, like I was talking, telling you about Isaac Kimberly, the first child. Uh, they were they built the fort, like you said. The, if you build a fort on an island, you're probably not going to spend years building a fort and then just move in the next year. So it wasn't like they were just setting up tents. They were living their lives here, and eventually, the eventually, you know. The island just disappeared, and that was because of the local cement company. Limestone, it's it's good for it's good to make cement with, and, and people do not care at you know certain time periods about it. If you live in the present time, it's not history, but a hundred years from the early 1900s, when people were, you know, breaking that island up and using it for different purposes, little did they know that you know it could be it could have been levied around. And, and visited in today's uh, culture yeah. if it would have been protected and not used as a, as an e economic uh, endeavor. And when the Louisville Cement Companies went to Corn Island and was taking 
you know, they were, they were removing pretty much all of the trees to get all the limestone. And Vegetation. That, yeah, and that led to erosion on the island, and it sank. I mean, that's pretty much what happened. It sank, or it got flooded. And by 1895, most of the island was gone. And by the 1920s, it was all gone. It was, it was completely gone. 24, they say that the water, once the, once the canals and everything, the dams were all, it was ready to be, and the water rose, and I'd say like by 25, it was, you couldn't see, they say right. you couldn't see the island anymore. It's interesting, it's interesting reading the articles online, uh, the old newspaper articles of Louisville in the 1920s. There were some people calling for, hey, we need to stop this. We need to. There was people that's great. And they didn't listen. And this is exactly what happens when you don't listen to people talking about, hey, we need to preserve the environment. Places just disappear. They, <laughs> they're gone. I they're mean, talked about. That's what. That's what. That's when myths are made. They go, Corn Island was a myth, man. Well, it's yeah. not there now. Right. Just because they can't see it now. Right. I mean, it was. It was something special. And it's a shame that it's gone. But you know, just imagine now. Like, let's say that we one day get some scuba gear. And uh, we go scuba diving down there. You never know what. Well, you never you don't know, know what you can find. You don't know what you can find. Right? If there's any kind of alchemy, any kind of metal that can, that was an axe head, it could have been a uh, the trigger of a gun. Uh, you don't know. It, it would just be cool to uh, to touch upon be, something that's that historic to this region. And you think? I mean, I I grew up here my whole life from one years old. I mean. From when I was born to now I'm 18, I lived here my whole life, and I never once heard a point on it. Never. I never once heard of it. And then I start researching, and you know, I found this great 43-acre island. That's right, pretty much near right, front door, and right where I live, and I never heard of it. It's like. Why haven't I heard of this? You know, and it's just interesting to do all the research and you know find everything about it and you know, learn a part of our history that was important and one of the first settlements. And you know, Louisville was Louisville was a it was destined to be a city on the river, and there's a plaque down there near Port Nelson Island, and it it shows you like. If you stand facing north in front of the plaque, it's directly kind of on the river in front of it. If you could imagine seeing the plaque and imagine looking and seeing where it is, it, it kind of directs you where it was in the river if you stand in front of the plaque facing north. But, uh, you know, we're going to keep trying to put out information and we're going to go over certain things again. This is the first time we'll talk about Corn Island, but it's not the last. Right. And an interesting thing, I mean, Corn Island still have significance today. Um, actually, there is a the James family. I don't know who they are. I've never heard of them. I mean, there's tons of people with the last name James. But online it says the James family still to this day annually pay taxes for the land of Corn Island, hmm. even though it's not there. They it was no passed sense. down generation to generation that it's so important to them. But they will still pay taxes to claim that that is their land. That means that one day they could throw a levy on it, and we could one day walk the grounds, and they could revegetate the island. Or you don't know what kind of cool futuristic technology could allow them to separate water and do the work to restore it. Yeah, and there's a annual Corn Island storytelling uh, festival uh, every September here in Louisville. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go definitely. Go. We're gonna go. Uh, and yeah, it still has significance today. It was major back in the 1700s and up until the 1900s. Yeah. I just want to be like real old and be like, oh, look at this island. <laughs> I can't believe that we had a chance to talk about it 70 years ago. Yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of history here. And this is just the first subject. We're going to talk more about global history in the coming weeks. Um, but yeah, this was just uh, I read this in the Louisville Panorama, uh, a book that he owns, um, and I read about it on uh, Corn Island Archaeology dot com. Uh, that's a good island. Uh, that's a good website to research the island. 
uh, if you're interested in it. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for today, guys. We're approaching 15 minutes, so uh, and we don't want to get kicked out of our location. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to happen, so yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so uh, that's going to do it for today. Uh, look forward to coming up soon, whether it be tomorrow or the next day. Uh, talking more about ancient history and the mongols that's going to be our next video topic and eventually we're going to work into more stuff but yeah uh, thanks everybody see you again have a nice day